Hey everybody, this video, which features things not going exactly how I had planned, is sponsored by Squarespace. Thanks Squarespace. Okay, we have here an empty container. We have the last vestiges of the fall decorations that were left on the porch, and now we have this empty container. We also have a beautiful day. Um, so I am trying to crank out some Christmas containers uh, today. So I thought I would just walk you through the process. Now this is kind of interesting. I don't exactly know how this container is going to come together. So I think we're going to find out as one. Um, I don't have a specific plan. I have a couple of ideas. It might be too much. We're just going to see what happens. So I thought I'd just sort of walk you through and we will see how this goes together since I don't really have a plan. Okay, so this is a planter that we made and I'll put a link in the description for you to how we did that. Um, I, it's quite a big planter and we need a big planter for this spot. It's got to hold this corner and so we need something big here. It does have a metal liner. Um, I have left in the majority of basically all of the potting mix, anything that didn't come out with a plant. And um, actually the pansies that I put in for fall, I just tucked them in the back corner. They're still growing great. I'm just gonna leave them in there and see what happens. Now I'm putting in uh, this floral foam uh, layer. This is cut to fit this planter. And I've got, it to, I used two layers of it and I've just glued it all together. Now, last year I got a lot of heat from people for, for using floral foam. And I understand that. On the other hand, I've been using the same floral foam for a long time, and I don't see any need to stop using what I have already have. So perhaps going forward, and there are a couple of planters I'm gonna be doing that I don't have any foam cut for, so we're gonna try a different method for that. But I am going to reuse what I had. I do like working in the floral foam. I think it has, um, it works really well. There are, of course, disadvantages, um, environmentally speaking, to using the floral foam. But I have it, I'm not gonna stop using it. Okay, so that goes in and now we're gonna build on top of that. Now I've used a ring in the window box for many years and I will again. This is a different ring. The problem with using a ring in another planter is that it has to be freestanding. The one in the window box kind of leans against the window and that works fine. So we took this wagon wheel and Mr. Much More Patient, I'm gonna show you what he did because so, you might want to try to make this work. He drilled through, if you can see here, he drilled through the bottom, three holes. He just put in a long threaded rod with little um, acorn bolts at the top there. And that's all I did. So we've got three, one that goes straight down and then some angle. And this should sit on the sides of the pot. So that'll provide a little bit of support. So I think once these go in through the foam into that soil um, and then that soil will freeze, I think this should hold up, we hope. With these rings, um, I've talked about this before, but if you haven't seen me put together one of these containers with the rings before, the rings that I use most of the time are just steel rings that we had fabricated extremely inexpensively at a local steel shop. Um, but you could also use, like in this case, um, the frame of a wagon wheel. Um, those I think are kicking around a lot. Um, you could use stays from a whiskey barrel or a wine barrel. Um, I've even suggested to people, although I've not tried it myself, that you could try spray painting a hula hoop and using a hula hoop. Think anything round would work. So uh, it does work best, I think, for the lighting. If you can keep the lights on the outside edge, I've been doing the lit hoop thing for a long time now, and I've tried a bunch of different ways, and I don't think the effect is as good when you wrap the lights around. So if you can keep them around the outside, that works well. A regular string of lights will work just fine, but I have found that these, what they call cluster lights, and I hope you can see these, they're the, the, these particular cluster lights, which are new this year, appear to be like tied in here or something. I don't know how a person is supposed to get them out, but what they, what they are is tiny little lights on little stems. And I find that those work really well for this, but regular old lights work fine too. And I just wrap them around the outside of the hoop and then I use cable ties to, um, to just wire them on. And if you look closely, you can see the cable ties, but you'll never see it if you're not looking closely. And again, you guys, if you haven't caught my tip for using cable ties, I'm gonna show you, this is the, this is the life-changing tip right here. Cut the hole in the middle of the bag, not the end, and then just pull them out like that. When you cut the end, they all fall out. So of course I bought the wrong size cable ties, but you know the little trick with cable ties, you can just double them up. Uh, 
and then I'll have twice as many tails to cut off, but you get the idea. So I've just worked my way around most of this. I'm just trying to secure this in enough places. You obviously don't want it flopping off. Okay, bit of a pivot here. We're gonna work on another part of this for the time being. Now, do you recognize this? If you saw me do this container last year, you will remember this. I actually, so this is all um, willow and fantail willow, curly willow and fantail willow that I wired onto a tomato cage. I'll link that video for you below so you can see how I did that. Um, I actually took the entire thing, picked the whole thing up and put it behind the garage. And actually, it weathered pretty well. I mean, the branches aren't nearly as vibrant as they were last year, but they're still, I think it's still a good look. And once you get some lights in there, I think it'll look great. Now, last year it was, and I, did, I even left uh, most of the pine cones on because I wired those things on so tight that getting them off was almost impossible. They are not going to feature into my design this year, but I'm probably not gonna bother taking them off. I don't think they hurt anything. So I'm probably just gonna leave them on there. I can always cut them off if I need to. Um, so last year, the only thing that I didn't like about this is that I wanted it more full. I had no expectation of how many branches it would take to cover this uh, this tomato cage. So it, was, it always looked a little sparse to me. So what I'm gonna do is just add some additional branches onto this. And you guys, I'm just gonna use those little wire ties um, again for this, although the, for these I have really small ones and I'm just gonna use those. So I just got a few things to add on here. Now this is, I think, let's just see what this is. This is um, Golden Curls um, Willow. Uh, so that's gonna be good, so I'll work that in. And then what I got was a few bunches of small curly willows and I thought I could just kind of put those mid-level. And then I apparently only bought one I don't know what I was thinking, but I only bought one thing of short fantail willows, so I'll work those in too. But I think that will help fill this all in. So I'm going to start with the big ones first. And I just stuck this in here temporarily just to have a spot to work on it rather than doing it on the ground, which is what I did last year and about broke my back. So these little uh, curly, what are these called? This is mahogany curls, just tips. Um, they come in these little bundles. You know what? I'm gonna keep them in these bundles and just add them around the outsides. Why would I bother taking them out of those bundles? I think that's the perfect little size to add some bulk to this. Now I'm wiring these up high because my thought is that all the greens and stuff are going to cover all this. So I'm just going to get a little bit more height out of these because it's the tips cost less than the, um, than the taller branches. So by wiring them high, I still get that same effect, uh, but it actually costs less. So you can see there's just 
little cable ties everywhere I left those rubber bands on. Um, it actually ended up with all the pine cones on this side. I might end up cutting those off, um, even though I don't know that you're going to see them that much. So, and you can see some of the stems go down, and so they're wired into this tomato cage two or three times. Some are just wired on to other things. This wide branch right here, this is called Fantail Willow. And I like that because I feel like it just gives it such good texture. Um, and some of them have like these great little, let's see if I can get this organized for you here. Some of them have these great little, um, uh, little buds on them. So I think freshening this up with some new stems this year actually worked out great. I mean, if you look in here, you can see some of these older ones like this guy right here is kind of gray, but generally speaking, it's all this sort of orangey bronzy color. Now, as far as lights go, I think last year I actually wired lights all the way up and down in the center. And I don't think I'm gonna to need to do that this year because when I couple that with the ring, I will still put a string of lights right in the base of this to make it look like it's on fire because that's always the look I'm going for. But once I couple it with the ring, I think there'll be enough light to see what's going on here. So that's the side view of it. Of course, it's totally tipping over because like I said, this is the video in which everything tips over. Oh, and one last thing, halfway through that, I decided to take uh, these little, I decided to take these little finials off the corners. These are, when I made this pot, um, those are just uh, drapery rod finials and I spray painted them and I just decided maybe the whole thing was a little formal so I just took those out okay so that's done for now Okay, so we just pause for a project update here. Clearly things are not going how I had planned. Um, getting this ring to stay stable is problematic. It, obviously it's super heavy. Um, we finally got it in there. We obviously blew apart that foam. I will just sort of piece it in. The only thing I need the foam for is to be able to stick the greens in at basically sideways at an angle so that I can get those in um, the way I want instead of sticking up. So I'm going to build that out a little bit, but now this is stable. I feel comfortable. I don't want to have this thing fall down on top of a dog or a person or something. So that's in there stable. It's resting on the edges. We got this whole thing in there. So we're making progress. So I just wanted to show you what I do on like a really, this is quite a long branch here and that's longer than I need and I don't want to waste that by tucking that way in. So what I will do is trim it down to somewhere that sort of makes sense and then I can have two smaller branches and then I just nip off, um, I just nip off the ends here and then I will go in there and just cut that to a point so that I can stick that in there and then And then when it goes in, I can put that at an angle into the foam. That's why I like the foam is because I'm able to lay those at an angle and build them up that way. And you can alternate. See how this has a, a bend to it? You can alternate, you know, up and down like that if you're trying to get some to swoop down. So like right here, I feel like this could use like a little bit of down. So while I'm putting these in, I just want to talk briefly about where I got these greens from because it's a big topic of discussion. Um, if you are not lucky enough to live somewhere where you can just go trim your own trees, it can be challenging to find some greens. What I have done, so these are bales of Fraser fir that I actually bought from a local garden center. It's not exactly the most economical thing to do, to be perfectly honest, um, but it's economical when you consider my time. So one of the other things you can do, and I have done this before, is you can buy the cheapest Christmas tree you can find. And um, like sometimes the big box stores have very inexpensive Christmas trees and cut it apart. So I've done that before. 
Um, I just didn't feel like spending the time on that this year. So that's why I went with the bales. So I'm just trying to get sort of an even skirt going here. So think of this sort of as a tutu. Okay, so now I've got this sort of base formed here. And now we need to get another, I like another layer in there. Um, now last year, the pine cones sufficed is that, cause I kind of covered this whole thing with pine cones. This year we're going a different direction. We're going magnolia leaves. And on magnolia leaves, I love the backside of leaves as much as the front. Of course, these are living, living? Recently fresh cut magnolia leaves. And of course they will not stay fresh cut for long, but they do hold their color pretty well um, outside here. So my goal is here is to create an inner ring of magnolia stems. So I think with these magnolia leaves in here, that might be enough. I mean, I kind of want to keep it simple. <laughs> She's, I kind of want to keep it simple. She says as she deals with like a killer light ring, this giant mass of stuff, a billion lights, magnolia leaves, and this other. I just want to keep it simple. I think I just want to keep this bottom layer simple though, because there is so much else going on. Okay, so you see how it just, everything's curving up here. I think I'm going to tuck some more Frasers in there to try to make this a little bit more level at the bottom. So if you thought, hey, that looks pretty good, we could stop there. Don't keep going, you need to stop at some point. You might be right, but it's not what I'm gonna do. We're gonna put more lights on. I'm gonna put some lights through the bottom here. Okay, we still have a bit of a mess that we have to clean up around here, but let's just get in there so you can take a closer look at how all the lights are in there, mostly just set in there. Um, I think you can see that this is, I want you to see this side so that you can see that the branches, that the branches are sticking out from the hoop and behind it as well. So there's some like three dimensional going on there. I still have to cut off a wire tie I see. When you go to the back, I just want to show you this. I just took the string of lights that I that actually wintered over on, it still works. I just bundled it up and I just attached it to the back of this tomato cage. This is how I'm hoping to get that lit from within look. If that's not enough light, I will add another string of lights to really make like this this make this thing look like it's on fire. So that's what the back looks like, just so you know. It's a little sparse. Again, no one's gonna see. Well, not bad, considering I didn't exactly know which way this was gonna go, what I was gonna do, and then it tried to kill me. I think if we learn anything here, it's that um, you gotta be a little careful if you're gonna use these guys. Uh, it's in there really sturdy now, so I feel good about it. We ended up bending those threaded rods a little bit so that there were two pointing back and one pointing forward to kind of help this um, get some more stability, which seems to have worked. Um, and now I feel good because it's plenty sturdy. So that's a, that's a load off my mind. Uh, in any case, I hope you enjoyed seeing this come together. There's gonna be a lot more Christmas and holiday and winter containers coming together. Um, not, none will be as complicated as this, I assure you. Uh, this is the, this is going to be the most complicated, but I have a feeling it's going to all be worth it. So we just have to get these lights turned on and, uh, and then we get the full effect. So big thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You know, Squarespace is a one-stop shop for building a website for whatever you might need it for, be it a business or just sharing your garden with family and friends and having a beautiful page to do that on. If you don't already have a domain, you can purchase it right from them and then you get this really beautiful parking spot to keep it so while you're building your page, people end up somewhere pretty. And then they also have a complete insight into where your traffic's coming from, what type of devices people are using. And then Squarespace also offers a great commenting system as well. So you can really engage with the people that you're trying to reach on your website. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash impatient gardener for 10% off your website or a domain purchase. 
Like what I wouldn't give for something to stand up. If you're doing a hula hoop or something, you probably can't. Oh, damn. The sneezing. Cut.